All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody to today's webinar, Why Companies Are Moving Away from Traditional Relocation Programs, presented by Urban Bound. So fun fact before we get started, this is the highest registered webinar that we have ever given at Urban Mount. So clearly all of you on the line are extremely interested in this topic. And the reason we felt inclined to cover this topic today is it's an increasingly dynamic time in this industry and there are a ton of forces causing change. So before we get started, I just want to introduce who is hosting today and who's on the line. I'm Abby Bauman, the Marketing Manager at Urban Bound, and I'm really excited to be here today. A big part of my job here at Urban Bound is researching and listening. I spend a lot of time interviewing and understanding our clients, and through that I get a lot of exposure to all kinds of different relocation programs. I understand our clients' needs and their challenges, and I take what I learn and I help our teams at Urban Bound start the conversation surrounding all these pain points, these trends, and the growth in the relocation industry. And with me here today is Chris Collins, our VP of Sales. Chris, do you mind telling everyone on the line a little bit about yourself? Sure, good afternoon everybody. If uh, Chris Collins, Vice President of Sales here at Urban Bound. Uh, if you can't tell from my photo, I'm an extremely excited and happy to be here today. Yes. Um, you know, with my background um, and, and kind of where we're coming from, I actually did the math going into this webinar and in the last year, it's scary to even think about this. I've actually met with 368 different companies to talk about the relocation program. So um, excited to share with you what we're hearing and what uh, we're seeing in the marketplace. Yeah, so before we get started, here's today's agenda. What are traditional relocation programs? What are we talking about? What is the point of this webinar? I realize you all probably might have a different definition for that, so we're just gonna cover that quickly. Then what factors are affecting the change? Why are things evolving? And then we'll transition into what's next and where do we go from here? And if we have time, we will answer questions. Just so everyone knows, this is a 30 minute webinar, short and sweet. And if we do not have time for questions at the end, we will answer them offline. Yeah. So feel free to ask anything in the Q&A section on your little chat panel. So. Up first, what is a traditional relocation program? Chris, what are we talking about? Yeah, so we thought it would make sense to just create a baseline understanding um, of what we're referring to when we say a traditional relocation program. So obviously, uh, relocation is meant to create an incredible experience for the employee. Typically, this is in-demand talent that we're going after. Um, but with a traditional program, it's going to be predetermined services. So we are going to decide what categories of services you will receive as an employee of our company. We're also going to have predetermined vendors. So these are vetted suppliers. These are the folks that are going to actually be doing the work to help you move. More often than not, it's paid in full by the employer. So it's fully subsidized, fully covered. Um, whatever the cost is, don't worry about it. We're going to pay for it and we're leveraging a third party administering the program, relocation management company, for all intents and purposes, that's exactly what Urban Bound is. We are a relocation management company. So an example of what the, uh, you know, maybe those services are, are representing these tiles. This is very typical, right? Home sell, home buy, we're gonna set you up with realtors to help you move your home and, uh, and buy a new home travel for you and your family to the new place that you're moving to, moving your household belongings, your worldly possessions, temporary housing, and then another large one that's usually offered is storage. So again, very typical. Um, and this has been going on for decades, right? And the yeah. reason why a program like this has lasted uh, you know, decades is because there's a lot to like. There are, and a lot of our clients are still running their programs this way. Well, absolutely, we have plenty of clients where we're doing fully covered traditional relocation programs, and we're gonna kind of have a, a scorecard throughout the webinar uh, as we look at different types of programs and where they win and where they fall short. So again, what's to love about these traditional programs? Well, first, it creates a completely consistent experience, right? If I move 10 people through a program like this, I can re easily uh, kind of replicate that experience and make sure that there's consistency in the move. Additionally, it's a very high touch kind of white glove experience for the employee. 
Typically, the relocation management company is doing a lot of the heavy lifting, the coordinating, and it's a, uh, being outsourced to them, so the employee is hands-off, very high touch, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other thing with when it comes to high touch and consistency, which is really important, is it's de-risked. Moving is highly nuanced, uprooting your family and going to a new location, there's a lot of risk. And so one of the things that's a win for a traditional program is it's typically low risk. So again, a lot of great things about the program. And Right, so now that we've kind of got a baseline of who on the, uh, of what we mean when we say traditional relocation program, we wanna understand who on the call is running this. So I'm gonna launch a poll really quick here. I'm gonna let you guys um, answer the questions, A, B, C, or D. Um, are you running a traditional relocation program at your company? Yes, yeah, so we'll give you guys a couple seconds. Abby told me before the webinar she was going to give no more than eight seconds to answer this. So oh, it looks like I'm already giving 11. Okay, I'm right. going to end the poll <laughs> here and share the results. Right. All right. That's so funny. We said it. I bet it's about 40% are giving it for all employee populations. And then we've got another 30%. So the overwhelming majority on the line is uh, does have a program in place. So uh, that's great, 72% in total. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So we have these programs in place, but why are things evolving? What is going on that, um, what forces are out there that are causing change? Um, Chris, you want to answer this? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of things that are going on that are affecting uh, those that are on the line and, and program managers in general. One, which all of us can agree with, is there's an absolute talent shortage, right? Um, many of the uh, uh, Industries that are represented as attendees to this webinar have actually negative unemployment. I mean, that means there's more job openings and there are even people to fill those roles. And so why does that matter? Well, more and more companies are looking at mobility and relocation as a strategic lever for their talent management strategy, which means a lot of our positions are being elevated and we're getting a seat at the table. So we're having conversations with the C-suite of our respective organizations about mobility. Now, the challenge with that is, is we need to be able to speak the language of business, which is data. But it's very difficult in a traditional relocation program to articulate that ROI of a sterling program and how that is impacting the larger strategy of the organization. You know, you couple that with macro forces, whether they're macroeconomic, socioeconomic, political, everybody on this line obviously is aware of one that we kind of talked ad nauseum for the last 18 months. I'm not saying urban bound, although we did as well, but yes. tax reform, right? So, you know, tax reform was highly disruptive to this industry and it caused a lot of people to take a look at their program and, and think critically about it. Now, we have all of these pressures being put on us and the biggest one is a shrinking budget. You know, everybody I talk to, those 368 companies, none of them have said, I have great news. We have a blank check to run a relocation program. We have blank check moves. You know, those are slowly starting to go away. You know, gone, not, I wouldn't say gone are the days, but largely gone are the days of the move this person at any cost, mm -hmm. right? Every dollar that's going out for relocation is being scrutinized, right, Abby? Right. So all these pressures, plus you have a total change and shift that's been going on for a decade plus of shifting expectations from employees. We'll talk a little bit about what we mean by that. Right. So your employees have expectations of what they expect from their company yep. and from a relocation program. But honestly, so do you. You guys on the line, there are things you need to run your relocation program that you're seeing and getting in your everyday life as a consumer. What do we mean by that? Yeah. Like what are examples? So tough picture to kind of see, but... That's a real scary, <laughs> ominous looking taxi meter. You guys yes. remember those? So what happens? I'm in a foreign city. I get into a taxi. I'm in with this stranger. I don't know how to get to the destination I told him. I don't know if the route is the right way. I don't know if the guy's taking me for a ride. I don't know when we're going to get there. And you don't know how much it's going to cost. cost. Exactly. <laughs> and before they used to take credit card, there was always that sinking feeling you'd get to say, oh my gosh, do I have enough cash in my pocket to right. pay for this? Because I have no idea how much it would cost. So how have we as consumers solved this problem? We're used to Uber. We're so used to Lyft. Right. Exactly. So before I even agree to get into the car and, and book this individual, I know exactly 
the route they're going to take. I know exactly when I'm going to get there. And most importantly, I know exactly how much it's going to cost. So what does that all mean? Predictability. Yes. Right? Predictability. And we expect that in our consumer life, and we should expect that in how we interact with our, our company and our vendors. Oh, boy, what's that? Looks like a pretty boring cup of coffee, Chris. Sad, sad cup of diner coffee. And this is how we used to drink coffee, right? And what options were available to me when I'd order a cup of coffee? Cream or sugar? Or cream and sugar, right? Yes, so a whopping right. four different combinations of how I could take my coffee. Where are we today? Starbucks, right? Fancy, fancy drinks. Fancy drinks. And what's the point of all this? Uh, believe it or not, you can go online and look at this. There are a whopping 87,000 combinations of a coffee drink for you at Starbucks. And what does that mean? It means everything about me is individualized and important, and I get it my way. Full choice and flexibility. Right, right. right. And that's happening, and we, should, we, we expect that as we run these programs. Up next, um, you used to go shopping. You need a new winter coat. You have $100 you want to spend. You go to Dick's Sporting Goods and you buy the coat you want to buy. Now you can go online and you can compare the prices. You can look at how much it costs at REI, how much it costs at Amazon. Basically, what does this mean? You have the opportunity to save money and you should be thinking about your relocation programs in the same way. Exactly. Relocation programs need to catch up. And if you think about it, let's go back to that scorecard. So we have the traditional program, and there's a lot to love for the employee's experience when it comes to these programs. It's consistent. It's high touch. It's low risk. But as we have that seat at the table and we're having conversations with our CFO and our CEO about the mobility program, they're saying it's a completely unpredictable budget. Right. Right. So, Abby, how many people are you going to move this year? A hundred. And how much is that going to cost? I have no idea. <laughs> That's a problem, right? Secondly, there's no choice or flexibility. Now think about this. The policy we created was predetermined services and predetermined vendors. So what does that mean? The policy decides what I get and the relocation management company decides who I get. And in no part of that equation was the employee's voice heard. Right. So it creates exceptions. It creates escalations. It's look, my we're talking about one of the most stressful moments of my life. That's like top five. And I'm uprooting my family. I have unique needs in the five things you said you're going to give doesn't fit for me. Yeah, I can't ship my horses. <laughs> can't you? I didn't know you had horses. I don't. In but... Chicago? Don't yeah, no. Congratulations. <laughs> um, and then finally, there's little opportunity to save money, right? Now, I'm not saying there's no opportunity. There are ways you can structure the traditional program and you can save money, but at the end of the day, our budgets are being squeezed and we have to be creative, right? Right, so all of these negatives kind of associated with the traditional program or things we're seeing, they were moving from traditional programs and the pendulum is swinging. So far, it's going to cash program. And why is that? What's so great about cash programs? Well, number one, it's a predictable budget, right? How many people are you moving this year? A hundred. How much are you going to give them? $15,000. Perfect. Don't ask me to do the math, but I know that the budget adds <laughs> yeah, up quickly. <to> right. <laughs> <laughs> Additionally, it's highly flexible, right? So I give you the $15,000. You can spend that money on anything you want. Abby, what are you going to buy? Um, I'm going to ship these hypothetical horses I don't have. Fair enough. Maybe a flat screen TV, right? Yes. Oh, yes. That as well. So it also lends itself where the money is not spent for its intended purposes, right? And that's one of the challenges is not only is there little opportunity to save money, there's actually no opportunity to save money because I'm guaranteed to spend the exact dollar amount I gave you even if your move didn't warrant it. Mm -hmm. So what we've done as an industry and as a collective whole when we've moved to cash is we essentially said this is no longer a benefit of working for our company. Relocation is now a form of compensation. Right. Right. And philosophically, companies are asking themselves, do we agree with that? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and should it go back to being a benefit? How do we do that? And again, we have clients that run either one of these programs and they're seeing success, but there's this dynamic shift. Now, where it really suffers, I would say, and what my clients and those that we talk to say they see when they move to a cash program is it is not a consistent experience, right? Right. So if we took 
10 urban bound uh, co-workers, we're all moving to San Francisco, we all get $20,000. Do you think all 10 of us would have the same experience? Absolutely not. Well, one of us is gonna ride a horse cross country. <laughs> yes. That's definitely that experience I'm having, but it's completely inconsistent, right? It's not predictable experience. It's also no touch. <laughs> it's a check. Give me help. Right. A check, a handshake, a pat on the back, and a I hope to see you on your start date. Yeah. Right? I hope you make it. Yeah. Which presents incredible risk, right? Um, you know, I've moved 12 times in my life. How, how many times have you moved? A lot. I'd say eight or nine. I'd say we're, we're, we're present relative to the general population. I would say that's pretty high. Yeah, right? we've moved a lot. And, you know, and we, we talk to folks that say, hey, we, you know, we're giving this cash to high level executives. They're, you know, uh, later career. They've moved a lot. They know how to do this. But, you know, you look at like Malcolm Gladwell's uh, statistic that he always cites where he says it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert in anything. And so even at 20 moves between the two of us, we still are not experts in our own right. And right. that's true for the general employee population. So so where do we go from here, Chris? You had said something about how when there's change going on, there is an opportunity to take advantage of that. So yeah, we, we talk to our clients and we say, look, you have this challenge for going after talent and you have these forces that are putting pressure on your program. This is not a difficult time. This is actually a great time of opportunity because you can differentiate the offer when there's such a polarizing offer available in the market, meaning job offers. That's what I'm talking about. So when I give you a job offer, I'm giving you this full package or I'm giving you cash. And there really hasn't been a lot in the middle right. to help address and find all the best things of both ends of the spectrum which is why we've launched a platform that is new to the market. It's revolutionary, known as Freeway. Freeway. Freeway is a flexible managed budget. It's giving your employees the power and the freedom of choice to choose what's most important for their unique move. I mean, your employees, they're given an appropriate size budget that they, along with the Urban Bound, can prioritize based on their unique needs. So you think about it from pet shipment to lease breakage to an extra home finding trip, employees get to decide what benefits matter most to them. And they'll have access to Urban Bound's network of vetted supplier partners to ensure everything is running smoothly. But for our clients that want to introduce even more flexibility for the employees, well, they can use that same money for things like down payments on an apartment or even book their own suppliers all without losing the ability for the employee, urban bound, and the employer to track that spend against the budget all in real time. Everybody's on the same page and it's full transparency as it's happening. And since relocation is considered a taxable income to the employee, whether it's grossed up or not, shows up on their W-2, it's important that they know exactly what the costs are before the move is over. So whether the employee is working with our suppliers or not, this is all accomplished without sacrificing white glove service and support. So this is not a self-service move. Each employee, they work with a dedicated relocation consultant. So everything that we love about that traditional relocation program, that high touch, that offloading, it's still enjoyed with this type of program. So if an employee never wants to log into any software to help with the move, and they simply want us to manage that budget and manage the move before them, we're more than happy to oblige. In fact, like the service level agreements, SLAs, the, nothing varies or changes based on how the employee decides they want to be serviced. Complete customization. And so what does this mean? It means for the employers out there that your employees' unique needs are being met, and they're being met without any exceptions, any escalations, any awkward conversations with the employee. But most importantly, you're protected because you're never going to spend more than the managed budget. Right. So what does that mean to you? Back to predictability. So you can easily predict the total cost across multiple moves. So how many moves are you going to do this year? A hundred. Oh, you, now you're changing you, every you, time. Do you do math to me? <laughs> yes. How much, what is your average managed budget you're going to provide? $22,156. Oh, you're killing me, Abby. <laughs> cool. Well, if I had a calculator, I'd tell you exactly how much our program is going to cost this year and not a penny more. 
really exciting. So one other thing to think about, any of the money that's, we're spending the money on its intended purposes, right? Which is what we lose when we do with cash. But the employees' needs are being met, and any money not spent is instant savings back to the organization. In fact, we have clients that are using this program, and on average, they're coming in 21% under what they had originally budgeted. So we have that pressure, right? We have to find ways to save money within our relocation program. On average, these clients are saving 21%, and based on the size program, some of our clients are getting several hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars back yeah. into their HR budget. So let's take a look at that scorecard again, right? Because it's being fully managed by a relocation management company, urban bound, you can still create that consistent experience and it's still high touch. It's low risk because we are working with vetted suppliers, the buck stops with us and there's a single point of accountability, which is urban bound. We talked about it, it's a predictable budget. It's incredibly flexible for the employee. So how they need to move and what they need, that nuanced thing is being addressed and there is an opportunity to save money. So conceptually, what does this look like, okay? Well, all these tiles represent different services that Urban Bound could uh, pay for. And in this case, this employee has a $25,000 managed budget. Now these services can either be booked through Urban Bound or you notice it says the employee can do it themselves and get reimbursed. And then down at the bottom there, there's a couple things that simply we don't have a vendor for, but you could use part of that $25,000 managed budget to address those unique needs. Now it doesn't mean all of these tiles are turned on for the person. It's through our platform as well as conversation, we're surfacing up and helping the employer prioritize which of these tiles would make sense. Yeah, so let's say Urban Bound is relocating you, Chris, to San Francisco. All right, I'm off to SF. So I'm given that $25,000 managed budget. Now I'll tell you, I own a home here in Chicago and I do plan on buying one in San Francisco. I do not want to mess around with 30 days short-term housing, et cetera. And I'll tell you why. I got two little ones at home mm -hmm. and we're not living in temp housing. I'm moving right into my new location. So <laughs> where do I spend my money? Well, obviously I have to move my belongings. I'm going to do two home finding trips. So I want to make sure we find the right house. You better believe I'm not driving cross country with Owen and Rosie. So we're flying. So I'm going to ship my car. I do need a realtor to sell the home. I need one to buy a home. I'll take you up on that offer for mortgage assistance. Obviously for my wife and I, schools are really important as is the neighborhoods. So all in, my move to San Francisco ended up costing $24,202. So I came in under the budget by 798 bucks. So I'm also moving to San Francisco. High five. I, <laughs> I only get a $15,000 managed budget because I am, I do not have a family. However, I did just recently buy a home in Chicago. So I'm going to sell that, but I am not buying another home in okay. San Francisco. So I'm going to rent, so I'm going to need a leasing agent. But my aunt's a realtor, Okay. so can I use her instead of Urban Bounds Realtors? To, to sell, sell your home in Chicago? Absolutely. Okay, cool. I'm going to do that. And I'm also, I need money to put money down on an apartment rental. Yep. And in San Francisco, first month, last month rent, what is that, $6,000, $7,000? Yeah, $6,000. And here's the kicker. I have an English bulldog named Harry. Hey, Harry. And you know English bulldogs, you can see in that photo there, they have like a nice big nose snout situation. <laughs> Basically, they can't fly. So I need to pay for a, um, a service to ship Harry to San Francisco to drive him out there. Yep. So all in all, my total actual spend of my move is $13,892. And I come under budget about $1,000. The point of it is, I'm happy, my needs were met, my family was taken care of, and I had White Glove Service to help book those suppliers and coordinate the move, and so did you. Yeah, and but here we you two it. totally different moves. I don't know where your horses are, hopefully they're also taken care of. <laughs> the horses aren't real, Chris. <laughs> oh, what? All right, so how does this look uh, in terms of a visualization of kind of how the interaction can be for the employer and the employee? So within, this is a screenshot of UrbanBound software platform. Within the platform, you're given your managed budget, and in green, you see there's a running total. 
Now I can either book services because estimates are coming in through the application from Urban Bounce Partners, and I can compare those services and book, or if I would like to, we said some employers want to turn this on where they can actually even go outside of the network for your typical services, I can by submitting an expense. But the point of it all is neither one of those changed how I get supported by Urban Bound. I still have access to Rachel. Rachel's actually right outside these doors. Yes. Um, and I do have unlimited access just like I did when I worked in the traditional relocation program. So everybody's on the same page. What Rachel is looking at is exactly what the employee is looking at, but also the employer gets real time view into what's going on in every move from things like what milestones have we achieved? How much money has been spent so far into what suppliers? But I can also see all of the estimates or bids that are coming in. So complete transparency, complete visibility in what is going on. The data is at the company's hand. And I can see this at the individual employee level. You see Chris Collins' move. Or I can see it in real time at the global level. So now I'm looking at a specific policy for a specific time frame. I can see all of the expenses that have been spent. And at the bottom, you see that kind of aqua green. Those are a visual representation of how the um, moves have performed against the budget. Yeah. So again, to recap, there are a lot of things to love about a traditional program when it comes to the employee's experience, but the employer is feeling a lot of challenges right now. So we swung the pendulum so far over and gave cash and what we gave up by doing that was the employee experience. And so now there is an opportunity in the market to enjoy all things and have it be a win for the employer as well as a win for the employee. Okay, so we did have one question come in and we do have like two minutes. Sure. So I have somebody who asked, how is this reported back to the ER to uh -huh. report on employee's paycheck? Yeah. Can the ER grows up so the employee is not negatively impacted by the taxes? Yeah, and I would say about 90% uh, of our clients are gross enough. If anybody's trying to figure out, have those conversations if they should or not. Um, the vast majority out there are gross enough. Um, within Urban Bound specifically, we have a transaction report that is, uh, can be pulled on demand. And it's going to show every single transaction at the employee level. That can be scheduled to be sent to the employer's payroll team. So it can just show up in their inbox and they can uh, upload that into the payroll system. And the payroll system is able to calculate the gross up within the earnings code. So it's really a seamless kind of easy transition and the payroll team would never even have to log into Urban Bound. We do have clients also that take us up on the offer for us to do the tax calculations. So whether you're grossing up or taking the taxes out, uh, we can do it either way. Cool. Um, we've got another one that came in. We still have another minute. Sure. Can you have varying levels of budgets based on different employees, uh, levels of employees? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, that's pretty standard. So companies will, we will work with companies to build out programs that take a couple different inputs into consideration. So we look at weight, this, some companies will look at weight, distance, size of families, or, um, uh, tenure or seniority at the company to determine what is the right kind of global uh, budget. But we also have clients who will determine the budget at an individual level. So we have the flexibility and choice of how they want to run that program. Okay, we do have a few other questions coming through, actually a lot more than Good. I thought. Um, but we only have like yeah. 30 seconds left. No problem. So we will answer those questions offline, no problem. But I want to let everyone know you are getting a copy of today's webinar with a few key slides as well. And before you exit... Well, I will add, I will take the questions that are coming in and in that email, I'll send the answer. Oh, awesome. Yep. Cool. Then everyone can kind of see the answer. Yep. Um, and then before you leave, you will be prompted to fill out a quick survey. Just give us some feedback on the webinar content. We're always trying to improve and make, make better webinars for you guys. Um, and then we, if you want to keep the conversation going. Yeah, I'm going to have members of my team reach out to everybody who attended. And if anybody wants to talk specifically about their program or learn more of what this is all about, um, we're happy to be a resource even to just benchmark what your program is against what we're seeing out there in the space. So happy to be a resource, expect to hear from the group. 
other than that, we want to say thank you. Thank you. I know it was a quick webinar. So again, we will follow up and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, everybody.